Shalom family. This is me, Mary C, coming to you yet again with another video. And I'm in the kitchen today. Uh, it's kind of where I started out at when I started talking about cooking, right? <laughs> well, anyhow, this video is for the newbies that are out there. Um, you know, when you first getting started, I know how it is because I remember when I first got started. It can be overwhelming. You don't know where to start. So how do you prep? Why do you prep? Uh, what do you prep, right? So let me start with, why do we prep? We prep to survive. That's the simple answer. We prep to survive so that our families are taken care of and that we're taken care of. Uh, we prep so that we don't starve. We prep so that uh, if we have an emergency that's a medical type of an emergency we have the supplies needed to um, to get us through that storm a medical storm emergency uh, medical storm whatever the storm may be we prep so that we can be ready for whatever is coming our way so that's why we prep how do we do it my solution to how to do it is bit by bit, do a little here and a little there at a time. And then that way we can break it down and it's not so overwhelming. Um, what type of things do we prep? Well, I am going to talk with you today. Uh, I'm gonna break it down food and water and then other, okay? And in the other, I'll have first aid information tool, information fire, security, clothing, hygiene, shelter, miscellaneous and such okay but one of the things I also want to talk to you about and touch a little bit on is um, a bag okay so if you're prepping most people will talk to you about having a bug out bag so what is a bug out bag let me show you mine real quick I'm not going to go into detail because this would be a very very long uh, video this happens to be one of my bags <laughs> And I say one of my bags uh, because in the event that we can actually leave and we're not on foot and, uh, you know, we have some type of a vehicle that we can actually use, this bag here has a lot of stuff in it that would travel in a vehicle, would not travel on foot, but would travel in a vehicle. So I'm just showing you this one because this is like one of the first ones that I did pick up. And I don't know if you can see the... Uh, writing on there but I picked this up at a thrift store probably didn't pay but a few bucks for it and it is a military bag military grade bag and again I'm not gonna go into what's in it right now because that could be a very long uh, video but let's suffice it to say let me put it down for a second let's suffice it to say that I have shelter so it's got different compartments in it can't really see it, so I'm going to turn it back around. It's got different compartments in it. It's got shelter uh, supplies, first aid supplies, food supplies, clothing, and a whole lot more. But this is one of my bags. Again, it has uh, a mess kit in it, and it has um, weapons. Uh, and I'll say low grade weapons because it's got like a, uh, what do you call this thing? A slingshot. It's got a slingshot, it's got a knife, uh, full grade type of, of weapons. But in a pinch, if I needed to get up and go, that one could go. It would be a little heavy because it, it's loaded down with quite a few things. Um, I have one that's a little lighter that is a to-go bag. So seriously, if, if it was like, okay, gotta go, and I know that we're going to be on the road and I need to be lightweight with what I'm carrying. I have a smaller bag and it's not as loaded down as this one here. So I just wanted to show you, because I mentioned it a couple of times that I have this military bag, right? Well, that was it. And again, it's got several different compartments in it. So you newbies out there, if you're looking for a bag, um, there are several places that you can go to get your bags. And I have a whole bunch of stuff. I'm doing a show and tell today. So I have a whole bunch of stuff behind me. But you newbies, when you get ready to go and get a bag, check the thrift stores. Check your thrift stores. Uh, check your closet. You may even have 
a backpack in your closet that has several different compartments if you went to school, what have you, and it's pretty sturdy. You can use that. You can start with anything. Um, uh, let me let me go and and do a little bit of a plug if you don't mind. And the little plug that I have is uh, yours truly has published just recently a bug out bag basics book and in it there is a checklist that you can go through and you can check whether or not you have the items that you can put in your bug out bag so if you're interested it's out on Amazon and uh, you can pick that up just go out and look under my name uh, Mary Sheffer and I'll spell her last name C H E F F E R. So look under Mary Sheffer and my books will show up and the bug out uh, bag book is out there. And so uh, that may also help you when it comes time for you to to put your bug out bag together because I tell you you don't have to you don't have to spend an arm and a leg. There are a whole bunch of uh, preppers that are out there that promote their products and and I'm not against that don't get me wrong I'm just frugal right and um, you know I want you to be able to budget just like I want to budget right so um, they have bags out there and and some of them can can be very expensive um, but I'm telling you you can do it you can do it without having to go the expensive uh, route you can do this you can do this if I can do it you can do it so here's the thing what do you what do you want to prep now that's if you have to go we were talking about the bug out bag that's if you have to go and there are different types of bags some people even have bags for their pets or their fur babies right so there are different types of bag the one that i showed you is a bug out bag there are um, um there's the to go bag there is the um get home bag and that one has another name but I can't remember it off the top of my head right now there's the get home bag um, but there's different types I just want you to know there's different types of bags that are out there okay um, but the other thing is if you're prepping to stay put uh, what do you prep what do you what do you stock up on and right now it's important for you to make sure that you're stocking up because your family will depend on it okay your family's survival will depend on it you need to start stocking if you haven't started do it now it's not too late i know people are telling you oh if you haven't gotten your stocks it's too late no sweetheart it's not too late the only problem you're going to encounter at this point in time is the prices are a lot higher now than when i first started so you're going to encounter the you know the price the price uh, uh hikes it, it is what it is, right? But it's not too late. Do what I do. And, and I see it in probably all of my videos. I go to and shop at the Dollar Tree, the dollar stores. Dollar Tree, Dollar General, Big Lots. Uh, let me make sure I'm, I'm not uh, missing anything. Dollar Tree, Dollar General, Big Lots. I think I might have them all. If I'm missing anything... You folks in the uh, comment section can add more. But, and then also, don't sleep on your thrift stores. Okay, don't do that. Don't sleep on it. So, so let me start with some food items. Like right now, if you go to your grocery store, I don't know about you. I went recently, and I'm going to tell you something. I haven't been in a little while. And I went recently. Why did I go? Let me tell you why I went. Uh, I am going to be uh, restocking some of my pressure canned items, my beans and my meats that I pressure can. Uh, I want to, to restock some of those items. And I can tell you at one time uh, when I was pressure canning like ground beef or steak or roast, um, I could get most of those for less than $4 a pound. Okay, less than $4 a pound. It's not happening today. Mm -mm. It's not. So when I went to get the 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 uh, roast, it was it was six dollars and something cents per pound. So, and when I went to get the burger, the the ground beef, uh, it was 
I remember I'd gotten before two ninety nine. I was able to get it. Now that's a while back, right? Two ninety nine a pound. Now it is. I want to say it was like uh, five dollars. If I recall correctly, it was like five do five dollars, close to five dollars a pound for the ground beef, which is like crazy. And then um, my mom was telling me she bought chicken wings. She got a pack of chicken wings. And it was $17 for this pack of chicken wings. And she's never paid that much for uh, chicken wings in the past before. So just I'm saying all this to tell you that the meat prices have just gone crazy. Okay, the meat prices have gone crazy. So I'm talking to you meat eaters. I know there are a bunch of you out there that you don't do the meat. But I'm talking to the meat eaters. So what do you do? And I did a, another video on this. And I'm going to try to be quick with this. Uh, but I did another video beforehand. Just to make sure that if your family is into meats and you really can't afford to go out and buy the meat bulk like you know you used to in the past because the prices are so high, an alternative to that is to buy your meats in processed food, if you will, canned goods. Um, so what I have here is is things like this. This one is steak and this is uh, let me see. This is a steak and cheese one. And this is a sirloin burger. But you can get your meat intake from soups or stews. See? This one's got steak. And this one has a sirloin. Are these the best options? Probably not. But in a pinch, will they feed your family? You betcha. So uh, if you're looking for a meat source and you, don't you can't get the, the meat. And then the other thing is... It's one thing to stock up on the meat if you have a freezer, right? If you have a freezer, you can stock up on the meat. But if you don't have the freezer space, then you really can't stock up on it. Unless you do like I do. You get yourself a pressure canner and you... Now, this is my ground beef. And you pressure can your... Can you see that? You pressure can your meats. You see a little bit of the oil or the grease or what have you up there at the uh, the top. But it's got onions in it and it's uh, well seasoned. But this is ground beef. You can use this. Open this up if you're making uh, tacos, if you're making nachos, if you're making spaghetti. Uh, it, it's a simple meal process with these. You just open it up because it's already pre-cooked. You want to heat it up. If you're doing spaghetti, you heat it up, put your sauce in. If you have to drain it, I don't really have to drain too much. It's just, it looks like it might be a lot of grease, but it's not. And uh, you put your spaghetti sauce together with it and your, your pasta. And, uh, you know, we like mushrooms and whatever else you're going to put in your pasta. But your meat is already done for you for the most part, okay? So I do this, I pressure can ground beef for tacos, for, you know, uh, and I even do one, this one here does not have the taco seasoning in it but i do one that just has taco seasoning in it you know with the onions and what have you so if you want to make tacos you've got you just you got it in a jar tacos in a jar all you need are the tortillas and the fixings that go around with it the cheese and, and what have you so uh you can pressure can that will save you in freezer space the only thing is you're going to be stocking it on your shelf but uh that's a good thing and it's a good thing because it's healthy for you. You know what you're putting in it because you're, you're doing it yourself. Okay, so if you can pressure can, and don't say you can't because you don't know how. Because yours truly, and I'm, I'm, I'm saying this, if I can do it, you can do it. Yours truly went to YouTube and watched YouTube videos to learn how to can. And that's how I got into it. So you can do the same thing. As a matter of fact, I have some videos in you know in my uh on my channel that is uh talking about canning so and there's there's plenty of others that are out there i'm no pro on it but i can do it <laughs> and i learned how to do it from youtube you can too so learn how to pressure can your food so that you have uh <coughs> excuse me shelf stable food for your family later on when you can't use your freezer or or such okay so just just wanted to put that out there Save your money as much as you can. And, and remember what I said. You don't have to do it all overnight. And I think that's one of the things that overwhelms a lot of people. They think that, 
oh, when you're prepping, you got to go out and buy bulk stuff. You got, oh, I got oh, to have so much stuff. No, honey, do it one step at a time. You know, you do it to fit your budget. If you only have $5 to spend this week, go over to the Dollar Tree. If that's all you got, go over to the Dollar Tree. And let me kind of tell you some of the things that you can get. We were talking about food, and I got all this food out here. But, but you know what? Let me do this. 125 for pasta. You can get that at the Dollar Tree. Okay, 125 Every now and then, the Dollar Tree, now look how big this can is. This is a one pound, 13 ounce can. And it is whole potatoes. You can do a whole lot with these whole potatoes, okay? You can do a whole lot with them. You can uh, put this in a stew. You can put this in a soup. You can, uh, I'm going to tell you what I did with it. I drained all the liquid out of them and cut it a little bit because they're kind of on the soft side. And honey, I, I fried it up. Is it healthy for you? Heck no, but I love it. Anyhow, so uh, judge me later if you like. I don't care. But <laughs> it, I fried me up some potatoes. I like fried potatoes with onions. And so I just, they're a little bit softer than they would if you were to, to you know, peel them uh, yourself and uh, cut them up. They were a little softer, but I didn't mind it. The flavor was there. They were still good. So anyways, I got this, this one pound, 13 ounce can over at the Dollar Tree. Every now and then they have specials and this was a special that they were offering. So I picked up three cans of this uh, just recently, okay? So I got my, uh, so go to the Dollar Tree because you can find some really good bargains there and in the food section. Get your peanut butter. You can get peanut butter from, from the Dollar Tree. Uh, you can get, uh, what else did I get over at the Dollar Tree? Now I'm going beyond the I'm going beyond the food food stuff, but that's okay. I'm gonna go I'll bounce back and forth because you need to know this. I got matches. I got matches from the Dollar Tree. Let me see what else I can show you. If you don't get matches to put in your stockpile, you can also get these guys that will light a fire. Okay? Either one of these. And later on I'll talk about the survival type of ways that you can um start fires but for, for the, the for the uh example of we're in-house and we can use these these are quick easy and cheap let's put that back if you can i didn't get this one at the the dollar tree but dollar general has them and you can get them at big lots this is a nice size jar of petroleum jelly now why do i say you need to stockpile this this is something that you don't hear a whole lot of preppers talk about but i'm black you know i come from a background where uh black folks we use petroleum jelly or as we you know would get the brand name stuff sometimes it is vaseline we use this so this kind of can you use this for lotion you use this for lips, your chaps, your lips are chapped. You use this for lotion. You use this on ropes. If you need to make a, a rope that's, uh, you know, uh, lubricate a rope, you use it for just about anything. This is first aid. This is hygiene. This is, you name it. And you can use this. So put this on your list. Make sure you put this on your list. This, uh, medical reasons, you can use this. So petroleum jelly, like I said, this is one of those things that a lot of preppers, they miss out on and they skip over it, but I don't want you to. Put it on your list and you'll be, you'll be grateful that I said that. Put it on your list, okay? So that's one thing. And I probably uh, could mention a lot more things that you can use that for, but I'm just gonna stop there because like I said, I don't want this to be too, too long. Uh, what else can you get over at the Dollar Tree? You can get, a tiny first aid kit that's got some really and I showed you guys this beforehand it's got some really good stuff in it it has scissors and pins safety pins it's got tweezers and, and q-tip swabs bandage uh, band-aids and it has a little utility uh, knife that's in there utility tool I should say you can get that at the Dollar Tree same thing with the sewing kit and the sewing kit can can double for uh, medical as well and again it's got it's got safety pins buttons straight pins it's got a thimble it has a measuring tape scissors and needles and I don't know what else is in there 
but this is handy. You, you have this, okay? Dollar Tree, Dollar Tree. Another utility, you know, go up towards the uh, counter in the, the, the counter area on the shelves that are close to the counter and you'll find these guys. Uh, the, the sewing kits as well and the first aid kit, you'll find these in those areas. But if you don't know where they are, ask somebody in the store and they'll show you. But this is a, a, uh, a tool, survival card tool, and it comes in its own little, little pouch. It comes with its own little pouch. And you can use this for several different things. I showed you guys this beforehand. There, I got this over at the Dollar Tree. It is a utility tool that has several different options that you can use. Um, it's got scissors. It's got a corkscrew. It's, it, it's got quite a few things. It's got a fingernail file. And then there is this little tool, which is a knife. Okay. It's not the best. But in a pinch, I bet it'll work. So anyhow, so we have these these guys. Oh boy! All right, so I'm trying to I'm trying to hurry up. <laughs> I'm trying to hurry up and do this. The other thing I got over at the Dollar Tree are these guys. These are uh, toothbrushes. You don't need water with these guys. There's two of them in a pack. You can throw this in one of your bags. You can keep it in the house. It doesn't matter. Uh, but it's no water needed, and it's got the little, uh, it's got the toothpick, but it also has the, uh, what is that, uh, the toothpick, it has the little toothpick in it, as well as the toothbrush is what I'm trying to say. I'll get it out eventually. So anyhow, so, uh, the wars going on between Russia and Ukraine, one of the things that we spoke about beforehand was make sure that you get your, your grain products. Make sure that you get your, your wheat, your, your, um, your flour, flour. I know the, the sugar is not a grain product, but it's, I'm including it because it reminds me of sugar. Make sure that you stock up on sugar because that's another thing that they're talking is uh, we're short on. So sugar, flour, cornmeal, all of that stuff. Make sure that you stock up on those. Do you have to do it all at one time? No, sweetheart. Do it a little at a time. Pick up. A little bit here and a little bit there when you go to the store get just a little one one extra thing and put it to your to the side that's your stockpile all it takes is one item and then you can say I started stockpiling one item one item a week if you have to that's one item more than you had before if you can do two do two if you can do ten items Hallelujah. Do the 10 items, especially if you start now. It'll be cheaper for you to do it now than to do it six months from now. Okay? So, so whatever you can do, whatever your budget allows, do it while you can. Okay? So, when you're, when you're stockpiling, a couple of things. I'm going to read from my notes here. First thing is, get foods that you and your family like. Okay, um, it really doesn't make sense to get things that you're not going to eat. Um, you know, you want to survive, but you also want to be able to eat the stuff and enjoy a little bit of what you're going to be eating. So make sure that you're getting items that your family uh, can enjoy. Right? You see, I'm having a, I'm having a, a, a mini holiday here. Okay. Um, then the second thing is again, start small and build up take tiny steps if you have to if you want to take a leap take but take a leap but you don't have to and i think that's one of the things that makes it a little it, you know so overwhelming for people is one they don't know where to begin and then when they do begin they're looking at all of the supplies that they need to buy oh my that's a lot and and it, you know you're looking at money and can we afford it and all this other stuff well if you do it my way you know, I'm just an ordinary person, but if you do it my my way, like the ordinary people, I'm no pro pro prepper at all. I'm no pro at this. Okay, but I've been doing it for over 11 years. Okay, so um, I know what what we've been doing, and I think it works. I think it works. So get your get your canned goods. 
I picked these over up over at uh, Walmart. Um, and when you when you're getting your your canned goods, one of the things that I want to rem remind you is people always remember vegetables. You know, they always remember vegetables, and they even might remember to to get themselves some some beans. Get pick up yourself some some beans. I got these over at it says Kroger, but our our uh, Kroger is called Food for Less. And so I picked these up over there. Get your, your vegetables in your canned goods. And, but here's what I don't, I want you to not forget. Get yourself some fruit. You know, this is kind of like comfort food. If you can't, if you can't have an apple pie, at least you can have fruit cocktail, right? <laughs> comfort food. Don't forget to get yourself some fruit for this, especially for you and the kids. You know, uh, get, pick up some fruits. Now I want to show you something also. Now, I have not tested this out, but I'm going to go by what I've heard experienced uh, preppers say. And I've heard experienced preppers say, you see the difference in these cans. One has the pull top and the other one you have to use a can opener in order to open it. What I've heard is this one here is more shelf stable than this one here. Because this one here has the uh, possibility of... Uh, you know, uh, of opening up uh, of uh, the top not being as secure as this one here, especially if you are stocking and stacking. Okay, so I uh, I go along with that. I do pick these guys up, and in a pinch, this is really good because you don't need a can opener. However, I am careful not to to do a lot of this. Okay, with these guys. Um, just to make sure and then you also want to check them okay you want to check them another thing that you want to you're wanting to do is when you're picking up your cans you want to check your cans you especially if you're going to put them on the shelf long term you want to make sure that your cans are not dented there's no type of uh, disfiguring that's been done to your can at all it's in good shape good shape will go on the shelf and it will store a lot better than a can that is dented. A can that is dented could seep and it could uh, it could cause the contents to go bad. And then you don't want your family to have the contents that are bad. You could, you, you know, they could get sick or die. So you just want to be careful with your cans when you're picking up your cans, your canned goods. Um, another thing that I do is I'm a spam person and we will fry spam. Okay, that's a meat source. Uh, we fry spam. I don't do the pork, so I always get the turkey. And the same thing with the Vienna sausages. I don't do pork, so I get the chicken ones. These are also meat sources. If you're not too much into the meat and you, can, you like mushrooms, you, my, this is my meat substitute, mushrooms. So get yourself some, some canned mushrooms. And again, Everything just about is going towards the the tops with the you know pull tops, and uh, so you just you you roll with it. You do what you have to do, right? But you know you know to be careful. So what else do I have up here? Oh 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 oh. So did, let me let me go back to my notes a little bit. So I you know what I was saying is be creative with your storage. I'm gonna take out something here. Be creative. These things work well and they're pretty inexpensive, right? <laughs> and you can pick these up at the Dollar Tree or Dollar General, whatever. But they make, they're, they're great for tools. You want to waterproof your, your matches. Here's your waterproof right here. This is one source, inexpensive way to waterproof things, right? Uh, in your your to-go bag or your bug out bag if you have to leave your home you want to make sure that you've got your important papers and a lot of people don't talk about your important papers you need to have your important papers um, pictures of your family members if you've got little ones you want to make sure you have current pictures of the little ones in the event that emergency happens you guys get separated you have to go away from home and you get separated you have pictures somewhere on your 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 body or your bag of your family that you can show people so you want to make sure that you have your inexpensive bags waterproof 
that you can put some of your important documents and photos in. And that was just one example uh, I wanted to, to, to share with you guys. So be creative with your storage. If you only have a little space, find creative ways to expand that storage. If that means that you have to put your bed on risers and slide vegetables and soup and, and whatever else underneath your bed, do whatever you can to help your family survive. If you're in an apartment, that's what I mean. Um, you, you, you make do with the space that you have and you be creative. One of my viewers uh, actually mentioned that she puts items in the pockets of her clothing that's in the closet because she doesn't have a whole lot of space. I think that's genius. So long as you're not like me and you forget what you put where. But I have a way of, of uh, fixing that too. Keep it, that's on my list. Keep an inventory list of all of the things that you're prepping and where they are. I have to write stuff down. I don't know about you, but I have to write stuff down. If I don't, I'll forget. So keep a list of your inventory. Keep a list of what you're prepping. Keep a list of what you put in your bag. And again, keep a list on that list. You put where it is that you are storing, okay? And uh, how many you have of it. And uh, with the, the food items that are, that are to stay in place, meaning you're not taking them off somewhere, uh, those items you want to make sure that you rotate. Well, first of all, if they are items like your flour, cornmeal, oatmeal, those type things, um, crackers, things like that, if you are storing those kind of items, you want to make sure that you keep up with the expiration dates on them and you want to make sure that those items you rotate out. What do I mean by rotate out? If I put this in, a, in storage today, it has a date that goes on it, it goes on our inventory list, and it has a date on it. If I am replacing one, let's say I, I needed to bring one into the kitchen. I bring the oldest one into the kitchen for use. When I go to the store, I'll buy a new one. The new one gets dated and replaces the old one, okay? And so I'm rotating the items that, are, um, that may expire a little earlier than my peanut butter or my canned goods. So you rotate your items out. I hope that was clear. Um, what else? I told you to watch out for expired foods. Watch out for them because lately the way things are going and because the shelves are, are sparse uh, at the, the supermarkets, one thing you want to watch out for is you do want to look at the expiration dates because now they're putting out stuff that, that, that is older um, that may expire sooner than than uh, you're expecting it to. They didn't do that before. This is something that they're doing now. So you really have to be careful. I noticed that when I went to get salad stuff, um, uh, the dates on it were the day that I was actually buying it. Prior to that, you'd get a date that was, you know, a week, a week uh, you know, you still had about a week or two uh, before they would expire. But no, I was buying the stuff and the date on it was the day that I was buying it. And I was like, oh no, this is not good. And and it didn't look all that good. So be careful when you're buying your, your items. Uh, check the exp expiration dates. I talked about the, the dents and the snap-on cans and uh, rising prices and what do you do? What do you do with the rising prices? You do like I do and you hit the bargain places. And I'll tell you something about these bargain places. The Dollar General, the um, Dollar Tree, and big lots. I'll tell you about those guys. Every time since this this everything, the pandemic and everything has been going on, every time I visit one of those stores, there has never been in my area empty shelves. They're always stocking, always stocking. I don't know why they have more stocks to put on their shelves than Walmart or Food for Less or some of the other places, but you can find things there that you can't find at the bigger store. So um, I'm okay with that because, you know, that just means that I can stock up what I need to stock up and I can do it for less. <laughs> so I'll go to those places to, to stock up. So um, what happens if you are on a budget 
and you can't get as much or you won't have as much as you would like to have, one of the things that I grew up with is this. You learn to make do with what you have, okay? And if you can't do that, then you learn to do without. That's old school, all right? That's old school. You learn to do without. You make do with what you have, and if you can't do that, you learn to do without. You'll survive. I'm here 60-some years. I'm here. You will survive, okay? You learn to, you learn to work around uh, situations. That's what you do. We've been prepping for a long time, only we didn't call it prepping. We, it was living. <laughs> it was called living at the time. But we've been prepping for a long time. You know, and you just, you just, you make ends meet. That's what you did. And so that's what, that's what I'm suggesting to you. You, you make ends meet and you do what you can. Okay. And then, uh, one other thing I want to say is, oh no, there's a couple things I want to say. And one of them is this, um, push together if you're prepping and you have the ability to do this, um, I have what I call a giveaway bag, okay? I don't want to invite someone in and, you know, that comes knocking on the door, Kit, do you have, you know, my family is, is uh, you know, we're having a, a hard time and we don't have this, that, and the other. And can you spare some food, right? You don't want that person to come in and see what you have. So what you can do if you are willing to help other people is have a giveaway bag somewhere close at your front door so that these are items that you picked up here or there and you can spare them you know you're not gonna your family won't starve because you, you have this this giveaway bag you put this bag to the side if someone comes to the door you can say you know what I've got this and you give it to them so that they can get the heck out of there but you don't want them to see what you have and you say I've got just a few things few items that we can spare and then you said well you know what I put this right here together just in case somebody would come by in need and so you can have these and then that way you've got a a giveaway bag but they're not coming in seeing everything else that you have and like I said just have it at the door and be ready or prepared to be able to give it to someone if you're you know willing to do that and then the other thing is remember your spices you can get your spices for like less than nothing over at and I don't have any to show you your salts and your, you know, your salt, your, especially if you're, if you can't get a hold of fresh onions or fresh garlic, uh, get the, uh, the seasoning that has the either garlic powder or the chips of the garlic or chips of the onions in it. Make sure we're, we're a spice family. So we like to spice up our food a little bit. Make sure that you don't, uh, when you're stocking up, you don't forget your spices. You know, I don't want you to forget your spices. So, you know, put together a little container and just fill that little container with all of your different spices. The other thing I want to talk to you about is laundry detergent. You know, that's a big one for me. And I, I still have, I owe you guys a video on how to make the, the liquid uh, version of laundry detergent. So this one here, as you can see, I've been using it. Um, this here is a combination of Dollar Tree again, okay? Very inexpensive. Now I'll tell you the first time I did, I actually did a video. You'll see my video out there. The first time I actually did a, a video, this one's just detergent, so we'll, we'll put that one to the side. I did a video and I included these guys here and I believe there was a, uh, a whitener or something in there. Uh, no, a color booster that was also included in it because it was color safe. These boxes have shrunk, okay? This is shrink shrinkflation going on right here, okay? When I put this together and showed you in a video, this is still, I'm still using that from that video. Um, when I put this together, the boxes were a little bit bigger than they are now, so they're, they, they, they shrunk, okay? So what I did was I found, the, I put a bin, I got a bin, and I just poured these guys in the bin, mixed them up real good, and put the color safe, uh, uh, color brightener. I put that in there as well and uh, mixed it all up and then I store it in this container and this container has a scoop in it 
and it was just a scoop that I got. I don't remember from something that I had at the house here. Uh, scoops come in quite a few different things. So when you have a scoop, don't throw it away. You can use it. So anyhow, I put this uh, together, and that's laundry. Works well. Get your clothes clean. It smells good, too. So use what you can. You know, you, you do with what you got, right? You deal with what you have. So you may do. So that's that's laundry detergent on the cheap. That's that's uh, Mary C's suggestion on laundry detergent. Here's the other one. Don't judge me. <laughs> I'm saying, don't judge me. Do you see this thing? We don't eat out a lot, a lot, but when we do, what we do is they ask, they always ask, would you like uh, sauce on the side, ketchup, mustard, anything? And when they ask, we say yes. So what happens? You get them home, you might not use all of them, right? So we take them and we keep them. So we have packages of honey. You have, sometimes you'll get pepper, salt. You get marinara sauce or, uh, you know, mustard. So when you get that, how about jelly? You get, you get jelly. Ketchup, all of that. I keep these. And the good thing about these, I put them in a container. And if you're on the move, on the go, they go in the go to go bags, the bug out bags. So you've already paid for your food. You get that as a bonus. Don't throw them out. Use them, okay? Use them. So, I know I was kind of all over the place, um, but I this is for, and I hope that that this helps the the newbie to consider that it's not always, um, it you know the expensive stuff is the best stuff. It's not always the case. You can start with things that you have already in your house. If you have a book bag in your house, it doesn't have to be the sturdiest, the best, or anything. Start small. If you have a book bag in your house, use it. If you got a pair of scissors, some band-aids, wet wipes. Um, I'm, I'm just trying to, off the top of my head, just thinking of things that you may have in the house. Some matches or, or a lighter. Um, uh, some toilet paper. Uh, garbage bags are even something that you probably want to put in your bag. Uh, put one of the kitchen white ones and put one of the big uh, the big green gallon, so many gallon ones. Put them in your book in your uh, bug out bag, okay? So these are things that you can you can pull from your home that you may already have to go in your bag, okay? Things that you can stock up on. Just think of things that you have extra of. If you have uh, extra uh, cans of corn in your your pantry, set aside two of them, one to two of them, and say we're not going to touch those. Those will be stock up. So you can stock up right now with things that you already have. Okay, so you're not you're not gonna you know break the bank to do it to just get started. And and then you can say with a bag with a pair of scissors and band-aids or whatever you can put in it. It's only got three items in it. Batteries, extra batteries. It's only got three items. You can still say, I have a bug out bag and I'm preppy. If you put two cans to the side in your pantry that you're not going to touch, you can now say, I am preppy. So you're on your way and 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 you don't have to break the bank to do it. You can do this. It's it's not that hard. The goal is to survive right that's the goal you can do this you can do this so last but not least to add to your list I don't have examples here in front of me uh, behind me <laughs> uh, right now but don't forget or should I say remember because they say that if you want someone to remember something say remember Try not to say, don't forget. So I'm going to say, remember powdered milk or canned milk. Um, 
make sure that you add that to your list. Either powdered milk or canned milk or both would be best. Uh, you can also get the kind that is uh, on the shelf in the cartons just so that you know that once you open it up you're going to have to put it in a refrigerator or put it someplace so it can stay cool. But that's also an alternative uh, for your milk. Okay, uh, You can also um, if you have freezer space, you can freeze your eggs if you you know want to, if you can buy them when they're on sale. You can freeze those and uh, so that you can use them later on to bake with or cook with. Uh, another thing that you can do is uh, you can freeze your butter. Okay, uh, you can also dehydrate your eggs if you have a dehydrator. Okay, but uh, you can freeze your butter and you can also uh, uh, pressure can your butter. And um, what else was I going to say? I'm just trying to make sure I'm covering everything. And this, like I said, it would be a very long video if I went into details on everything. But um, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. What am I missing? What am I missing? I think I've pretty much covered everything. I think I have pretty much covered everything. I'm going to uh, try to come back to you guys and do a live uh, real soon. It might even be today. We'll see what happens. But I just wanted to help you, you, you newbies that are out there. Again, I'm, I'm going to put a plug in. I got my book out there. If you're interested in it, it's over at Amazon. I'll put a link to uh, the you know, uh, Amazon in this uh, description, in the description. But it is good because it's got the checklist. So, and it talks about the different types of bags and what you would need to use them for. Um, and uh, so it's a checklist, but it's a guide, a little bit, it's a, it's a bitty book. It's not, a, it's not a real extensive, big, long, anything. Again, I am not a pro, uh, but I've been doing this for, you know, a, a little over 11 years. I've been doing this, probably longer than that. I've been doing that, doing this, and I know what works for us, and I know that this can be overwhelming. I have family members that I've been trying to get to do this, and they, you know, kind of keep saying, oh, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. So I kind of gave them a little bit of a boost. A couple of them I gave a boost. I, you know, took and picked up a bag and said, here, there's like three or four items in here. This is your start. And it was, they were excited, and, and now they're, they're, they can say they're prepping, right? So I mean, if you can do that, do that too as well. But for you newbies out there, I don't want you to be overwhelmed. I want you to be able to, to do this. And you can do this. I want you to be confident that you can do this. If I can do it, you can do it. And it's just simple, it's simple moves. Simple, easy moves. It's like, like doing a dance. It's like doing an you know, easy step dance. Simple. You can do this. You got this. Well, anyhow. I am going to end it here, and I, I hope I, I mentioned uh, everything that I, I thought I wanted to mention. And I hope that this helps you. I hope that you will do what you need to do. Your family depends on, on it for their survival. You want to survive, so do this, please. So, I love you. I do. But know this. Our Heavenly Father, He loves you so much more. Shalom.